Legal algebra. <laughs> Yes, you have a That's legal. As long as it's legal. You have an Legal algebra only. Oh, Daniel, the temptation to just cancel the x cubed and the x cubed. It is strong. And so wrong. So wrong. All right, I want to pull everybody together. Walking around, I did not see anybody doing legal stuff. Okay, so here's the issue. That x cubed in the denominator is dividing the 5x cubed and the 3x squared and the x. That x. Everything gets divided by x cubed. There's been some temptation for folks to say, oh, well, just cancel these out and be done with it and move on. Right, the problem is that x cubed has to divide all three terms. So one thing you could do is you could let it divide all three terms. Meaning, how about writing this as 5x cubed divided by x cubed minus 3x squared divided by x cubed plus x divided by x cubed. Is that legal? Yes. Yeah. Good. Why is it better? What can you do now? What can you do now that you couldn't do before? Oh, I've already heard from you. I want to freeze you up for a little bit. What could you do, Andy? Now can you cancel off the... Yeah, tell me about this cancellation. I'm still, this is y, not y prime. Tell me about the cancellation that you can do now. 5x oh. five, five squared? 5x squared? No, 5. 5, 5, 5, 5. 5x five. cubed divided by x cubed is just going to be 5. five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Minus yeah. this next guy over here. 3x mm -hmm. squared divided by x cubed. Mm -hmm. Depending on how you want to say this, you could say 3 divided by x, or you could say 3 divided by x to the power of negative 1. The nice thing is, now it's a power rule ready problem. Plus, x divided by x cubed? X to negative 2. Okay, remember there's a 1 up there. x to the first divided by x cubed, this is really x to the negative 2 power. This expression here and this expression are algebraically equivalent. They are exactly the same. The benefit of this one now, everybody knows how to find the derivative. Okay, so we are power rule ready. Go find that derivative. You could also do some factoring. Yes. This is a way you could go about the problem. All right, so at this point everybody should have the derivative, derivative of 5, everyone's going to tell me is? Three. Oh my god, the derivative of 5 is 0. Oh, zero. zero. Oh, not 3. Now even Mr. Harper's getting in on the action. Okay, derivative of negative 3x to the negative 1. Negative 3x. 3x negative 2. Is 3x to the negative 2. You bring the power down and you reduce the power by 1. So it's positive 3x to the negative 2. The last part here? Negative 2x to negative 3. Negative 3rd. And I love it. It's great. That is such a good answer. It is 100% correct. Yet the evil man that I am, I will hide this answer from you when it comes to the unit test. In the multiple choice, I will bury this answer. I will write it in a way that you won't expect to see it. How many guys see it? What am I going to do? Don't call it out. Paul sees it, Daisy sees it, Harper sees it, Jackie sees it, Karina sees it. Jackie, what do you see? What am I going to do to hide this from you? You're going to put it in the fraction. So it's like 1 over 3x to the power of 2, and then... Okay, 1 over 3x to the power of 2. Minus 1 over 2x to the power of 3. I will tell you that is absolutely going to be one of the answer choices. And if you choose it, you're wrong. What? What's the mistake that she just made? Mm -hmm. 
Um, What's the mistake? Uh, I don't know. Mr. Harper took a deep breath. Mr. Moran in the back, he's like, oh, yeah. Karina sees it. I promise you this is one of the answer choices, Marilyn. What's the mistake? Um, you're supposed to say the name is from the denominator. You're supposed to keep it What's being raised to the negative exponent? It's just the x. Just the x has that negative exponent, which means don't do that. The only thing that moves to the denominator is going to be the x squared. I thought it had to be in parentheses. No. Like, no. So Anything raised to a negative exponent, you take the base and you move the base into the denominator. Sure. The base. Okay. Totally expected that mistake. Hope, Jackie, you weren't going to make it, but you made it. It's fine. It's the end of the world. Not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. <laughs> Not the end of the world. Of course, when we lost the video, the kids in Ohio thought it was the end of the world. <laughs> All right, so let's see what you can do with three and four. I am just going to keep pushing your smart little particles. Um, so we get some good stuff happening there. Do we do it like one x one half? You gotta call me on over and I'll move you on. And then what do you do? I don't see that coming. One half is the square root, but still square. Yeah, it's like negative one point five. Oh, yeah, yeah, I I like that. I don't like that. It's like this, right? This, this, and then yes. it cancels on your root, no. but it's still square. That's not G prime. Get rid of that G prime for me. I don't like that. Like, like, why would you say it's like this? No, no. Alright, if I put it back together, a popular move, a popular move that I'm seeing is folks focusing on we don't like the square root in the denominator. So we're multiplying by the square root of x over the square root of x. We know this to be legal. Yeah. Okay, and so now you're getting the square root of x divided by x. That's good. The problem though is you still have x in the numerator and x in the denominator. You still have x in both places. This is not power rule ready. If you make this move first, it's okay. But you're not, it's not that much better. You could, however, think about this if this is division. And we have another way to write square root of x. Square root of x is x to the half divided by x. x to the 1 half divided by x. There's that exponent rule for division. We can make this x to the 1 half minus 1, which is x to the negative a half power. You also could have gotten there right away. One over the square root of x is the same as one over x to the positive a half power. And one over x to the positive half power is x to the negative half. Okay, the derivative real quick. G prime is power rule. Bring that power down. Reduce the power by one, so negative a half x to the negative 3 over 2. Some folks had that, some folks didn't. That's okay. Um, number 4, h of x is equal to x times the square root of x. Give me, give me one second, Daisy. x times the square root of x. Right now, we still, no rules, no way to work with multiplication and division. Powers only. Hmm. But x times the square root of x, I can't write this in a different way. How about x times x to the 1 half power? First question to ask yourself, is this legal? Yes. Second question, is it better? Yes. No. 
you. Yes. Does it allow you to do something you couldn't do before? Yes. Floor, what can you do now? You can do the power rule. I disagree with you. You're not power rule ready because there's still multiplication happening here. You don't have any derivative rules for like two things multiplied together. You're almost there. Gerson, what do you see? You add the exponents. You can add the exponents because the bases are the same. If you add the exponents, what are those exponents going to be, Gerson? 3 over 2. 3 over 2 because there's really an x to the first happening over there x to the first times x to the half, you get x to the three halves power. Adrian, what's that derivative going to be? Uh, one half x, I mean, wait. Hold on. Uh, derivative three. of x to the three halves. Yeah, three halves. Three x, halves. Uh, to the power of one half. Three halves x to the power of one half. Of course, if you want to write this as three halves times the square root of x, that works too. Yep, Grant. Can you write the g prime, like, the other oh, the one before? Yeah. yeah. You could write this as negative a half times 1 over x to the positive 3 halves power. Hold on, Paul. Even better, you could write this as negative a half times 1 over the square root of x cubed. Even better, negative 1 over 2 times the square root of x cubed. And there's a little more you could do, but... I only have to beat you guys up so much. All right. Let's continue the pushing, shall we? Yes. All right. I'm really curious about 6, 7, and 9. Trust those smarticle particles. If you're in crisis mode, use the cups. I'll come on over and help you out. 6, 7, and 9. If I turn around and there's a sea of red cups and you've only been thinking for five seconds, I'm going to publicly shame you all. Back to green. Oh, everybody, it's almost, everybody's on green except this group over here. Thought yet. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, it's scary. Six, seven, and nine. Should it be one eight? I'll tell you why. No. Not. Oh my God! You are the first person I've seen who has actually simplified that correctly. Don't scare me. Stay with me, Mama. Drink your water. Don't go into the light. If it is like this, yep. could we do also eight to negative one? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So the issue with number six has to do with what's being raised to the third power. The whole thing is being raised. The whole thing. So two x is being cubed. Two x times two x times two x. Everybody knows what that is. That is 8x cubed. Thank you, Sylvia, for being the voice of the people there. 2x times 2x times 2x is 8x cubed. You have 1 over 8x cubed. That is not power rule ready. 
you're only power rule ready when you have x raised to a power and it's not involved in a division or a multiplication. So the legal thing that we can do here is we can switch this. Again, it has to do with your rules with negative exponents. I want just the x to come out of the denominator. So how about writing this as 1 eighth x to the negative third power, which is what Daisy has. So when I go over to j prime, the derivative of 1 eighth x to the negative third, hopefully this is the easy part, bring that power down, negative 3 eighths, reduce that power by 1, negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. So you're going to have negative 3 eighths x to the negative 4, or even better, negative 3 eighths times 1 over x to the fourth, negative 3 over 8x to the fourth. If you're getting beaten up by the algebra right now, don't take it personally. It's going to get better. Okay. I promise. It is normal to be getting beaten up by algebra today. See what you can do at 7 and 9. Trust those instincts. because they're opposites of each other. Mm -hmm. K of x is the negative of x plus 4, which is the same as negative x minus 4. I saw it at least a dozen papers. We know that k prime of x is going to be... k prime of x is going to be... Um, negative 1. Oh, negative 1. I'll tell the jokes here. Okay. <laughs> negative 1. It seemed pretty instinctive for most of you guys in the room to factor. Yeah. yeah. Right? That difference in squares. Like, oh, I know what I'm supposed to do. And it's nice to see that we made some progress with the cancellation of the opposites. Like, that seems to be less of a problem now. That's good. Good luck at number nine. Did I say good luck? I mean, enjoy. <laughs> enjoy number nine. Oh. We're, we're skipping number eight. It's legal. I have a mask. Okay. Can we put the slides this morning? Right, number nine. I know you're like, I'd really like to work on number eight instead. Yeah, but I'm really curious about number nine. Well, we know that the graph is. Oh, this one translates to that graph. All the time. At the cusp point, the derivative does not exist. Okay, but that, so you're saying here's the graph. At the cusp point, the derivative doesn't exist. But everywhere else, the derivative does exist. And some of you are. Just don't I face it. I face it like I'm just stuck for me for me. All right. So, all right. Let's put everybody back together. Okay. Here's uh, here's what's happened. 
group number one, your paper is completely blank and you have no ideas. Group number two has really good memories and they know what the derivative is because we've talked about this on two different occasions in the last six weeks. <laughs> group number two is a way small group. <laughs> it's a way small group. Okay, absolute value of x does not look like x to a power at all. Can we all agree to this? Yeah. You guys all know what the graph looks like. Yeah. Show me. Yeah. Looks like this. Julissa and I had a conversation. She was like, wait, 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 wait. The derivative doesn't exist. It doesn't make sense to talk about the derivative. And my pushback to Julissa was, you're right. The derivative doesn't exist at the cusp at x equals 0. But it exists everywhere else. And so I saw a lot of folks that did this. They're like, oh, I remember what the derivative looks like. And they sketched the derivative. And the derivative is another parent function. Marilyn's got it. The one that looks like this. Karina's got it. I'm not really sure what Sylvia's doing. Okay, Julissa's got it. Oh, but with little holes. That is what the derivative looks like. We built it. Now, here's the thing. You guys know that the graph of absolute value of x looks like that. And here's where I'm going to get really clever. Because I know what the graph of the absolute value of x looks like, I'm going to write m of x a different way. It's equal to the graph of y equals x on this side for x is greater than 0. But what about this equation? y, y equals, equals negative x? x? That's equal to y equals well, negative x for x less than 0. What I can do is I can rewrite m of x as a piecewise function. It's x for x greater than or equal to 0. It's the negative x for x less than 0. What's the derivative of x? The derivative of just x? x to the first power? The derivative of x. I know the confusing part, you're like, but wait, what's the exponent? Remember, there's an exponent here. One. There's an exponent, so what's the derivative? One. One. What about the derivative of negative x? Negative one. Negative one. The derivative is one for x greater than zero, and negative one for x less than zero, which is exactly what this graph is telling you as well. Right? Y equals one for x greater than zero, y equals negative one for x less than zero. It all comes together. It's a beautiful thing. Karina, then Paula, we're done. If they give you piecewise functions, do you just like separate each part? Right. You're just going to take the derivative of the first piece. You're going to take the derivative of the second piece and say, ta-da, you're done. Paul. And that's the equation. And that would be the equation for the derivative. All the friends okay? Mm -hmm. All right. We've got just enough time for me to pass back your tests from yesterday. Yep. These are not in grade order, they're in alphabetical order, so don't worry, Julissa. It's like, oh my god, it's going to be bad. Diego, where'd my Diego go? Oh, he's not here. Gonzalo, also not here. Jage. Sheila. Hi, Sheila. Paul. Chris. Ivel. Floor. Karina. Michelle. Henri, not here. Jesus. Sylvia. Andy. Get close. Adrian. Jose. Marilyn. Daisy. Julissa. And then the boys that have better things to do than to attend my class. Mm -mm. Okay. So, I got to tell you, I was a little scared yesterday when I started grading the test. Because anybody want to guess what section I graded first? Free response. Free response. Free response. Mm -hmm. Things are not as good in the free response world 
as I would like for them to be. We are still getting all tripped up with things like f, f prime, f double prime. We are getting tripped up with sketching the antiderivative. And I was a little frustrated, heck, really frustrated, because we had spent so much time working on those skills. And there were so many opportunities to practice. So, number one, really clear messages we just <coughs> want to when it comes to the free response part. We have to get this under control. Okay. Then, after thinking really nasty thoughts about some teenagers for a little while, I finally get a chance to pull up the multiple choice. The multiple choice was really, really strong. Good thing. Good thing. Because for many of you, this balanced out to be pretty good. So first of all, I want to congratulate the following people who earned a four. If this had been the AP exam in May, these folks would be getting college credit for Calc AB. Gonzalo, Evel, Gerardo, Harrison, Flor, Henry, Andy, and Marilyn. Congratulations to all the folks that got a four. And then three people earned a five. We're not just going to clap for them, so wait for it. Congratulations to Paul. Could, don't, no, don't clap. Don't clap for him. No. <laughs> Karina. And Sylvia, who insists I need to check her test again. I did. You did a great job. You were the only one in 37 students who correctly sketched the antiderivative of that very last part. Sylvia knows what's going on when it comes to sketching the antiderivative. Go find her during lunch. So for those folks that got a five, we're going to do the cheese grater. I don't think we've done the cheese grater before. Okay, roll with it. It's a Friday. Here's how the cheese grater works. You get your grater. Get your grater up. You get your cheese. We're going to grate the cheese. So for the three people who scored a five on this exam, we're going to do great, great, great on the count of three, because you're going to grate the cheese. Oh. Ah, on the count of three, Adrian, you're going to grate your cheese. Get your, get your grater up. Get your cheese up. Ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Great, great, great. Well done. Now, <laughs> anyone who scored below a 75, and I'm not going to call your name out. I'm not going to publicly shame you in front of the Ohioans. I think that's what you refer to them as a group. Um, we need to meet today at the beginning of lunch for a little bit. Okay. I want to talk about what your grade is and what your opportunities are to get this grade back to where you want it to be. I know there's a lot of emotions happening right now. We're going to meet at the very beginning of lunch. What you're going to start working on now and you're going to continue working on this weekend. Anybody know? The unit test corrections. Now I've changed the reflection document a little bit for you. For each multiple choice question, you can see what was being tested, what the correct answer is, and what percent of the class got that right, as well as what was the most popular wrong answer. I just need to know, did you get it right or wrong? As you're making the corrections, you know what the right answer is supposed to be. And then you can do a little tally at the top of the next page to see of the different skills, where are you really struggling still? for the free response section of the test, uh, because we didn't have time to go over it, for each of the five parts, I'm giving you some feedback. Like, if you miss part A, here's the thing that you need to know to fix it. Okay? All right. Finally, there's some open-ended questions. I changed up the open-ended questions. I need to see what you actually did to study for the test. Be honest, you get no bonus points for putting in stuff that you didn't actually do. Be honest with yourself. If you did nothing, that is a clear signal, okay? Now that you have the test results, what should you have done differently? And just some other questions. I need the reflection document finished, corrections done, and test signed by mom or dad by the end of the day on Tuesday because I want to be available to support folks during lunch. See you guys later. Have a great day.